So in this component holder, what we have is a D size battery or cell. And what we can do is use this to measure uh, its internal resistance. Now this is a fairly standard practical and you set up a circuit a bit like this. So what I've got here is I've got my cell and this, uh, it looks like a small resistor, but that's just showing that there is actually an internal resistance of this component. What we do is we put a voltmeter across the terminals of it, and this is where we're measuring what we call the terminal PD. Now this is gonna change as uh, this is then in a circuit where we actually have a load being applied. And uh, effectively what we can do is we can use a variable resistor, or what you can do is also use a different combination of lamps. So you might have one, two, three, four, five, and effectively this is then acting as the um, external load of that circuit. And what you can then do is you can record uh, the terminal PD, which is V, and you can see how that changes uh, as you have um, different resistances in a circuit. And you basically measure, and I forgot to put this in here, you measure the current uh, in this uh, using an ammeter. So you're measuring V, you're measuring I, uh, and then you can plot that on a graph like this. And what you'll find is that your data should be in an approximately straight line. You can then use your ruler and you can take this line back up to the y-axis. And um, this thing here allows you to measure the internal resistance. Because the internal resistance, uh, which is little r, is equal to minus the value of the gradient. And the intercept here, the y-intercept, is equal to the EMF of that cell. This is effectively the, the EMF when there's no current flow. But how does that let you know about the power? And in actual fact, when the maximum power can be delivered by this cell? Well, let's have a think about the values. As V gets bigger and bigger, sorry, as I gets bigger and bigger and bigger, V gets smaller and smaller. And here I've just sort of shown that basically as uh, V is getting smaller, I is getting bigger. Well, what we can then do is we can use the equation P equals I times V uh, to work out the power. So effectively, you can uh, put some data where you record the power. And what you'll find is that if you've got a large value times a small value, that gives you quite a small value of power. Equally, if you've got a small value and a large value, the small value means that your power uh, that's given at is going to be quite small. But what you get here, you've got fairly large values of V and I. And actually, what we find is somewhere in the middle here, we have uh, bigger values of power. So the power goes from small to maximum at some point and back to small again. We can also work out the resistance um, of things like the external part of that circuit. Remember that uh, V equals IR, so R is going to be equal to V over I. What you can then do is you can record these values, and you'll find that basically at the start we've got a small value of resistance, uh, and as we have more uh, things in that circuit, perhaps more cells, or we're kind of increasing the resistance using this variable resistor, the resistance gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And what you can then do is you can basically plot a graph of power and resistance like so. And what you'll find is, depending on the kind of cell that you've got, you might find uh, something that you know looks a bit like this. Okay. And what you find is, as the resistance gets bigger and bigger, we go to the maximum power output that that cell can actually provide. This is maximum power, not maximum efficiency. This is a maximum power theorem that we're looking at here. And as you increase uh, the resistance, that then drops off. And actually what you might find is this is actually somehow linked to this graph over here. With the first bit of data, you uh, found your value for the internal resistance of the cell. And actually what you might find is uh, that your value of maximum power might should be quite similar to where the resistance of the external part of the circuit up here is approximately equal to the value of the internal resistance. So when the resistance of the load is equal to the internal resistance, that's when theory suggests you should get maximum power. But have a go with it. It's a nice, straightforward, practical. Uh, plenty of opportunities to practice setting up circuits, of taking data, of uh, drawing graphs, analysing further data, and then doing more work here to kind of sort of see if this theory is correct. So basically, that's how to look and investigate uh, the maximum power provided by a cell using just some very simple lab equipment.